Hey guys, Zuch here for my third video on the Nine Moons Invitational. As you'll notice, I have changed completely. And uh, yeah, I sort of was starting to get a little bit sleepy in the last video. Anywho, why don't we go take a look at it? Uh, this is against SS Doctor Who for third slash fourth place. Um, and again, I think my opponent banned my RG on in this match, although I guess we'll find out because it's been a couple days at this point. All right, I'll see you there. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, I think pretty obviously um, I need to get rid of Klaxon. It's just way too early for that. Uh, and then frankly, I'd probably get rid of Punisher. I uh, Probably not Shadow Sister, but I really don't like Shadow Sister early in the game. Like, it's not very helpful if you're not getting a whole lot of life. So uh, I'd probably just get rid of the Shadow Sister or the Punish either one. This is not a very good hand in general. Oh, never mind. Apparently I got rid of Grasp of Acme. They're all not very good cards, so I'm probably going to be replacing most of these regardless. Cryptographer. Awkward. So the reason this is so awkward is because normally a start of double ooze is very strong. Now he can just overload and then kill both of them. Uh, so kind of annoying in that regard, right? Uh, which is one of the reasons why I think I immediately replace one. They're, they're not very good if they die in one hit to the general. This is a great pickup, by the way. Let's me play uh, it out and the ooze. So, wow, it was just a good pickup there. Um, I did this little arrangement so that uh, it the ooze would almost certainly not hit the general. It would hit the cryptographer, or maybe this, it depends, but probably the cryptographer. I don't exactly remember how it works. Um, whereas if I had like, done it up here, then he could have made it so that the ooze comes down and hits him. All right, yeah, it's 50-50, not perfect. It's probably better that it hits the Spelljammer so that I can uh, kill it with my general, playing my own Spelljammer. So here I am taking the Mana Tile because I know that, well, for a couple reasons. First, um, if I put it here to block off the opponent, that lets him kill it with his Cryptographer and general attack, which is bad. I, I don't want that to happen. Um, but more to the point, I, I also don't want him to get the mana. Like, there's something to be said for risking it where, you know, I could put it here and then he could also just take it and not use the mana, but, you know, maybe trying to save it for later. But it seems highly unlikely that that would be the case. All right. So I just took it so he couldn't have it. And so that cryptographer couldn't hit it as well. All right. We're coming up with uh, Voth. He's going to put something over here. Okay, tiger. This is a pretty good setup for me. Like, uh, the fact he used a tiger and a general attack on the spell, spell jammer. When I have a relatively full hand, uh, I'm pretty happy about that. And that he didn't attack with this cryptographer, which seems a little bit weird, but uh, not that big of a deal. I mean, what's the? I mean, I can just kill it myself this turn. So he's letting me decide whether or not to kill this card. I guess the the only other way it would be relevant is if I run back here two spaces. But like just about anything else I do, I have the option to kill it or not. So it seems like. I don't know. If there were multiple creatures on the board, then it makes sense, but I don't know. I think I would have just attacked me. All right. On our turn, what do we do? So my first thought is, how valuable are these Abyssal Crawlers at this point in the game? And the answer is probably not very. Uh, at this point, I'm trying to replace to find something powerful, like a Spectral Revenant in particular, an Obliterate. And while these are nice to have, and, and I can like plop them down, um, they're not really the like all stars that I need uh, to win the game. So I'll probably throw one away, and I'll probably cast one this turn along with this abyssal crawler because it pumps it by by one. But um, I don't need both of them, and I, this is important as is at this point in time. Shadow Sister. So what I'll probably do here is replace this abyssal crawler, and then most likely play 
the other abyssal crawler and this uh, juggernaut behind him because it's going to be like what a, a nine nine. Let's see what happens. All right, I did that. Brilliant. All right, like I said, it's a, I, I always like to keep the board clean, so there's no reason not to attack that guy, especially since I have a Shadow Sister in hand. All right, here, uh, my placement of this is mainly to play around my Cantor War Beast, so right now he could, I, I know that he doesn't have the mana, but he could always like flash War Beast in or something like that, who knows. Um, there's really no reason not to sort of space out my guys like this. Um, all right, let's see what he does. All right, dumping wave R eight eight seems like a a wise move. I don't think he could take uh, even one hit from that guy. It would be pretty damaging for him. That was basically his whole turn. So, Kin comes up and attacks. I think right here it's a pretty obvious play. Just drop this Klaxon. Um, I replaced whatever it was that wasn't very important um, in an effort to find spectrals and stuff like that. I got this Klaxon. That's a good play at this point in the game. Clacks on, clacks off. <laughs> All right, so at this point in time, I had a decision, which was, I think I'm going to start running away. He's got six cards in his hand, which is a little scary. That, that can equate to a lot of burst from a deck like Magmar. So, like... Even something like Flash, Elucidator, Thumping Wave, Thumping Wave, which you can do, ne not this upcoming turn, but the following turn, that's 15 damage. Um, and so I'm going to try to get as far away as possible, and I feel like the game is going to be closing out pretty quickly, which is why I'm bringing up these Abyssal Crawlers. They don't, at this point in time, they've done their job, like, they're, they're going to produce plenty of Shadow Creeps so that any Obliterate I get is, is good, um... I also have this Klaxon now. So at this point in time, they're probably better off just as attacking something for two. So bringing them up, even though this is going to get eaten by a McCanter or something like that. I assume that Klaxon is going to be Repulsor B. I, I forget what happens, but he's probably going to deal with this or else he's going to die. Okay. I used the sad emote face because I was sad. It makes sense if you think about it. All right. Earth Sphere. Okay. So we are, even though we've we've got a pretty solid board right here, we are definitely not out of the clear. Um, we've got some clear play, clear, clear plays in our turn. We're going to be dropping this Kailana to gain some much needed life. We're probably going to ping the Ephemeral Shroud. We're probably going to Sphere of Darkness him to see what we get uh, and to deal him a point of damage and to gain a point of life. And then that's only six mana. We've got a seventh mana, so I, I don't know exactly what we want to do. We'll probably see what we get from the Sphere and then replace it or the other Sphere or something like that. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I'll always do stuff where you get to see new cards first. That way you can make decisions in the turn. Um based on that new information. So perfect, we drew a Spectral Revenant, huzzah. Uh, at this point in time, it almost feels like victory is assured as long as we can last long enough. So we dropped this Kailana way over here, so he has to like backpedal to come get it. Um, he can't kill it with like a McCanter or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Clack sons. <laughs> Glaxon's animation sound always gets me. All right, and we're just attacking with that one to get some damage in. We're not attacking with this guy because I want to stop him from getting to my general. I want to provide this little like impediment so he either has to like Blood Tear Alchemist it out of the way or Mechanter War Beast it out of the way or something like that um, rather than him just being able to like come up and punch me in the face for five. Nice little end of turn uh, life gain there. He still has five cards in his hand, so I, I, I'm not sleeping easy just yet. Yeah. 
So he uses Macanter here to uh, deal with the giant threat rather than do me extra damage, which is perfectly reasonable. I'm kind of missing the uh, Sphere of Darkness right now because I could kill this without having to take any damage. But this uh, this uh, Ephemeral Shroud is a really nice uh, way to deal with the opposing general. I mean, he had five attack. Like, this is going to prolong the game so, so much. All right. Um, we're just going to take no chances. We're going to punish this guy and then drop the Abyssal Juggernaut. It's a, it's a really nice series of plays because uh, it, it's exactly eight mana, which we have. It leaves a huge body on the board. Um, we're at plenty of life now. His board is clear, and the next turn we just get to like go face with the spectral. So uh, he has to deal with this abyssal juggernaut, and then also have enough life so that taking eight damage on the following turn doesn't straight up kill him. Bringing this in because it's getting to that point in the game where uh, I might just need the extra two damage to kill him. I don't know. Drogon. Uh oh. I wonder if he forgot that he got silenced. Or he might have known that he got silenced. This was showing off that he could have just straight up killed me. I guess he wouldn't have straight up killed me because I was at uh, 16 and he had a. He would have gone to 12 power, so I, I would have had plenty of life, but who knows. Anyway, that was game number one. Um, I didn't see any mistakes that I made in that game, as opposed to some of the other <laughs> games that I reviewed already. Uh, let me know what you think. All right, we're going to go on to game number two. All righty, here we are. It's a pretty good hand. Uh, the fact that it has a young Silithar means it's just incredible, because this is the best turn one play for a person going first in our position, because um, there's very little he can do about this. Uh, we're almost certainly going to get to play out a four drop, uh, unless he has like demonic lore and blood tier alchemist. But I whatever. <laughs> um, and so I'm I'm almost certainly keeping the spell jammer. And the question is, do I want to get rid of any of these things? I probably don't want to get rid of this young Silithar. Like I said, it's a great early game play. And as are these cards. Like this can be useful later in the game. Um, I might be inclined to get rid of the natural selection because I've got a young Silithar. So if he plays like I mean, this could just be useless for a while, especially if he's got, I don't know, any number of things that could make this pretty useless. But uh, it, it's going to nab a Kailano probably, so I'm going to probably keep it, I think. I could see getting rid of Blood Tree Alchemist. The reason I, I probably didn't is because um, if he's got any Abyssal Crawlers, they're coming down now. So I've got like a one-turn window in which I can pick him off, and I assume that I'll probably get rid of this at the end of the turn, or now that I've drawn this Azure Herald, which is not a very good draw right here, probably get rid of this. But I think ordinarily I would have gotten rid of this, but if he has Abyssal Crawlers, I want to be able to ping him off. Pa Ephemeral Shroud, sure. Uh, happens. All right, immediately getting rid of the uh, Azure Herald. That's a great pickup. Because it's going to let me kill all of his guys. Um, I can either... I had a couple options here. I actually... I think I thought about this almost to the point of roping. So what I could do is... I, I, I could do so many things here. I can ping this guy. Uh, come forward and attack this. And then drop this young Silithar. I can ping this guy. Uh, greater fortitude this and just kill this. And then play young Silithar. I could, you know just hit this guy with my general natural selection this or hit this guy with my general ping this there's so many things I could do here um, I could even just ping this come up here hit this played young Silithar and then hit that'd be plenty too yeah I don't know um, but at the end of the day I think I just elected to have a big guy um, and the reason is because young Silithars are a little awkward against Cassivia because she can hit them and then ping them with her Bloodborne spell, sort of making moot their rebirth, uh, since the egg will just spawn on the Shadow Creep and die. Uh, so I pumped this um, 
silenced or dispelled one so that I've kind of got two threats she needs to prioritize. Like if I had just pumped up this one, she could have s dispelled it again. I don't know. I like to sort of split up my threats if I can, and this was the most efficient way to do that. All right, running away like an idiot. All right, Kailano coming down. It's a really early Kailano, in my opinion. Uh, he might have not had anything else, which is certainly something that is possible. Uh, I don't... Personally, I, I don't know why I'm like so eager to natural selection this, which is what it looks like is happening. I probably ought to just play the spell jammer. It's much more mana efficient. And I really hope I end up doing that, because this seems like a really bad play. Ah, damn it. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I, I think I... Oh, okay. I overloaded that. That's fine, I guess. I think I still would have liked to have played... Uh, Spell Jammer, just to get the body on the board. Um, and it's more mana efficient. I can cast that at any point in time, really. But who knows? It got his only creature off the board, which is always something I like. Dancing Blades. Ah! <laughs> Dancing Blades is quite annoying. Okay. We've got a Spell Jammer coming down. I put it, um, put it here, so it's out of range of this Dancing Blades. I actually really like this positioning past Zooch. So I put it here, uh, and then came forward, and then hit. So if he, if this Dancing Blades wants to hit me at any point in time, I can always come Dire Tide Frenzy and basically finish this off, assuming that there's something else around here too, I get to kill that as well. I'm going to leave this up here, I think, un untouched. So that if the Dancing Blade wants to come up and hit it, and then like have their general around and, and kill the egg, I can come up and probably do some similar stuff there. So I like this positioning. And the reason that I like it here is because uh, he can't get to it right now. Oh yeah, I moved it down so that if the general wanted to attack it with her body, she would be in range of the Dire Tet Frenzy. I honestly do not recall what happens in this game, because I remember this turn being really awkward for me. Okay. Yeah. So we already replaced something on our turn. It was, I think, a... S I don't know what it was. It might have been a, uh, I think, a second cop copy of Natural Selection. I'm back after a brief hiatus. I don't exactly remember where we left off but so okay i have a couple things i can do here um i can come forward attack with the uh, my spell jammer into the abyssal juggernaut attack the abyssal juggernaut with my vath natural selection the dancing blades and then play spell jammer that's one thing i could do um i can dire tie frenzy the spell jammer come up here attack Come up, kill the Abyssal Juggernaut, play Spelljammer. Uh, this would die, even though it's only taking four. It's going to, un unfortunately, have to go in the Shadow Creep tile. So these are basically the same thing. I end up taking five from the Abyssal Juggernaut. My only other play is Spelljammer, really. I guess I could Earth Sphere, but it seems a little early for that. Um, and in the end, I, I almost roped. I, I think I decided on the Dire Tide Frenzy play. Um, rather than the natural selection play. I think that might be wrong. I think I'd probably prefer to keep this uh, moving forward, but I don't know. Because the Dire Tide Frenzy is so good with um, any of the haste minions in the deck, of which there are plenty. It, it just feels like it's going to be a more powerful spell, especially if he had, yeah. Like, imagine if this were, <coughs> were a Dire Tide Frenzy right now. Oh my gosh. Super imagine it. How annoying.
All right. I'm natural selectioning this. Okay. And Earth Sphering. So I guess there's something to be said for the fact that this play, I didn't have to run out the Saber Spine Tiger. Um, and I was able to Earth Sphere in the same turn, which is definitely nice. I was at 10 life. Uh, not a place I wanted to be. Now this gives me the ability to like start smashing in. Um, so that's pretty good. And these are all pretty solid, especially the second Earth Sphere at this point in time. Like Casting this, I'm, I'm going to find it pretty hard to lose, especially with my opponent at 13 life, even though he has five cards in hand. He's going to need a Kailano and then some other stuff to not die. Even if he had a Kailano here, which he might still, I forget. Okay. Even if he had a Kailano there, he uh, we still might have been pretty close to dead. Like, Tiger plus Dire Tried lets me get in with my General. <laughs> I was surprised he didn't... I mean, it wouldn't have mattered, really. Uh because this would have killed it regardless. All right, take four, take uh, another five, go to two. So he'd be at four life right now, if the, even if this was a Kailano, so who knows? Oh yeah, plenty of, uh, plenty of damage. I don't think there's enough burst for him to take me down from 13 life. Maybe, like, double Ghost Azalea would have done it. In fact, uh, double Ghost Azalea would have done it. But that that's about it, I think. All right. Fortunately for me, I've got this handy-dandy Entropic Gaze. Card is unfair. And I just bash him in the face for four for two meta. So, easy peasy. All right, I'm currently up 2-0 against SS Doctor Who. Let's go into game number three. My last general, Argeon. This is sort of a combo -y deck. I know if you've seen the other videos, you, you've seen it. <laughs> These are actually pretty solid in this matchup. They eat a uh, an Abyssal Scar, but they keep my hand real full, which is nice. All right, Sphere of Darkness, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Rather get that out now than letting him take care of a bigger threat. Okay. So my turn, what do I do? I think it's pretty clear that I'm coming up forward to do something. Um, is that, it uh, looks like I already replaced, so... I can't comment on that, but I'm either saber spining or playing Silver Guard Knight and letting Ooze smash into that. Um, I could conceivably play Silver Guard Knight like behind my general, such that Ooze will hit me and and not this. But that seems really it doesn't seem to do anything. It, I just end up taking more damage for essentially no reason. Um, I think I'm inclined to play the Silver Guard Knight because I might have to use the Tiger plus Roar to take care of a a Kailano in the back at some point in the near future, so that's my reasoning there. Alright, Silverguard Knight comes down. Uh, I think unsurprisingly he's gonna kill it with his general and then do something else on his turn with his four mana. What will it be? Alright, so he does play the Kailano. It's sort of... Um, it's sort of a little early, in my opinion. Uh, he might have had no other plays, but he gained, I don't know, one life, he, and then it's going to die. So I can kill it with the Saber Spine Tiger. Uh, it's not a very efficient play, right? Like, I've got these two mana tiles at my disposal, and uh, they're just going to go to waste. Even worse, he could get them himself. And this is not a high value. Like, it, Kalino's a very good card. But I can really pick it off at just about any point in time. Um, 
So I'd rather develop my board in other ways, especially since he's at 24. The question then is like, what am I? What do I want to do, right? I can. I have access to five mana, so I can either play this Iron Cliff Guardian, or I can play a Scintilla plus Windblade Adept, or I can play this Owlbee Sage plus Roar, uh, which I always like, <laughs> especially in this deck. Um, what I th what I think I end up doing is um, dropping this Iron Cliff Guardian in a spot where I can come up and Roar it. I think I, I might have actually misplayed where I put it, but and we're throwing away the spell jammer first of all, because clearly I've got a handful of cards. I don't need a spell jammer right this second. I want to take this mana tile because uh, he's closer to it with his guys, so I don't want him to get it. And I'm either going here or here. Yeah, there we go. So I go here because uh, if I went down here, I wouldn't be able to roar the Iron Cliff Guardian. Uh, conceivably, I could. If everything else stayed where it was, I could come forward two spaces here, kill this Abyssal Crawler, come up one space with Iron Cliff, roar it, and kill that like that. But this is just a little bit safer way to ensure that I get to roar it. Um, just without even... I mean, obviously, I played the game and I semi-remember what happens, but you have to feel like he is going to kill this. He's either going to punish it or demonic lure it, so... I would be very surprised if he somehow let this live. So, okay. And if perchance, like, he didn't have an option, then it would feel very much like I win the game at that point in time. All right. And an ooze comes down. Cool beans. I throw away the uh, Albi Sage, I guess because I don't like having fun. This is just a little bit awkward. If he hadn't put his um, Abyssal Crawler right here, I'd be able to kill the Kailana right now by moving down to... I mean, I can still kill it, but I can't kill it very efficiently. I really want to get this Mana Tile because it's going to let me play more than two things and use my Bloodborne spell at the same time. So... Um, what I end up doing is coming down, putting Windblade Adept here, putting Scintilla here, and Roaring, giving myself a 6-3 a Windblade Adept, healing myself for 3. It makes me feel pretty good, because I was pretty sure that Ooze would have to come forward and hit me like that. I miscalculated, though, because I guess not how battle pets work. I got a pretty bad... Um, RNG here, I think, because he could have gone left or straight. If he goes left, he attacks me. And if he comes here, he has a 50% chance to attack me, too. Alright, battle pets go. So the battle pet unfortunately comes and kills this thing, which was not what I intended. I'm angry, you can see. I'm even angrier because the Spectral Blade basically gets to blow me out. So, even though he's at 25 right now, the second Kailana is a little worrisome. I don't want to have to deal with multiples of these things, right? All right. Ah, it's going way too fast. I'm trying to talk about what I'm replacing. I replaced the Silver Guard Knight here because it didn't seem very useful. He would just, uh, I mean, maybe I should have come forward and played it here and roared it. Actually, it's probably what I should have done, but I didn't. That's definitely what I should have done. That was dumb. Oh, oh well. <laughs> I don't know why I came all the way over here. Maybe to, like, get this Shadow Sister, but it seems sort of silly. The problem here is that... There's a high likelihood that my, uh, not even just high likelihood, he just can kill it if he wants. No! This hand is garbage. My hand, I, I replaced it Silver Guard Knight, and I, in retrospect, don't know why. Uh, it seemed like I was searching for something at the time, and by golly, I didn't find it. <laughs> Uh, we uh, hail Mary for a minion. We find one, thank goodness. 
And so I do something a little weird here. I, I put this bad boy uh, down here. And the reason is I don't want him to just eat it alive with this abyssal juggernaut. I mean, yeah, it can hit me, but I can't. There's like nowhere I can put this where it's not going to die anyway. This at least gives me a turn to try to do something miraculous with like multiple divine bonds and an aura nexus or something like that. Moot point, I just die. Uh, as he finds a an extra shadow creep tile. Yeah, this is a little aggressive placement. I, I was trying to get lucky, um, and I could have prevented his attack, but I don't know what that would do for me. I was going to lose the long game. That, I was going to lose the long game, so I kind of had to do something risky to try to win the short game. Anyway, with a Kailano on the board, him at 25 life. Anyway, we lose that game, uh, and I can't help but feel like there were maybe a couple missteps. All right, on to game number four. All right, right now uh, it is 2-1 in my favor. If I win, then the series is over. And if he wins, so we go into game number five. Rah! Young Siltar comes up. An annoying start for my opponent. Uh, this hand is pretty gasoline. I didn't need the. T I, I could have kept the tiger, I think, but I, I also don't fault myself for getting rid of it. Because I found another two drop to play two two drops. Um, this placement here is so I obviously have to put one here, so I take the mana tile, and I obviously want to make it so that my guy can get the other mana tile. Um, like if I put it here, then he can't reach it. So I need to make it so he can get the mana tile. I don't want to put it here because then he can just kill it with his guys, uh, and it doesn't get the bonus. If I put it here, he can't kill this guy, um, as is because the young Siltar would be blocking his general and vice versa. Alright. Our opponent runs away. Oh, I remember this game. Cowardly. Runs away. Drops a young Silthar way back there. Alright, this is an interesting turn. Um, I got a lot of stuff I could do here, right? I could drop Spelljammer and Sunwisp just to draw a gajillion cards. I could replace something right now and see what I get and work from there. I could just play Ironcliff Guardian and see what happens there. Um, if I play Ironcliff Guardian, I'll probably be back here up here to uh, stop him from doing some stuff. Um, I really like holding on to Holy Emulation, but I this would be probably the card that I'd want to throw back to see if I draw anything new, because if I throw back uh, you know, the Spelljammer or the Sunwisp, then I might only have one play this turn, and I'd love to just cycle this for uh, something if I can. Um, I'm really scared of him getting this Mana Tile. There's uh, really nothing I can do other than just dropping something here, which is a possibility. You know, just drop the Sunwisp here, come up here, play... Spelljammer over here or something like that. That's that's certainly possible. What do I do? Alright. Looks like going from the Ironcliff Guardian play. Uh, I hope with this play I would replace this guy. But that's just me. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Because uh, if I'm dropping Ironcliff Guardian... And I, I kind of want to find a Divine Bond pretty quickly. Even though I assume it's going to die, I need that threat there. I need him to be, a, be able to do that. Um, to, like, kill my opponent if he leaves it unmolested. Thumping Wave. No! Classic Magmar. <laughs> Alright, this is sad. All right, this is a pretty close turn. Oh. Already going too fast. All right, I replaced the Sun Wisp. Uh, hold on, I got someone at the door. It's a package. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember what I ordered, but uh, it's going to be an annoying video to edit. Okay, so I replaced the Sun Wisp, which is probably fine. Um, 
even though it cycles, I just want to find more high impact things right this second. Uh, I, I'm sort of in a pickle here, right? So I can't, normally I would just want to like come forward and smash. Like if he hadn't overloaded or if this was like a, another general or something like this, um, I could have just roared, came in, smashed for 10, uh, and then wholly immolated or something like that. Um, to deal him 14, put him to 8, which is just like a lot of damage. That's not how it happens, so. Um, <laughs> Alright, we're back. Sorry, Chai was barking. Okay. So, I really like the idea of getting this LB Sage out, but I don't want to put it in a spot where it's vulnerable. This is how I'm going to win the game. Already right now, I kind of see that this is how I'm going to win the game because he doesn't have a whole lot of ways to deal with this card. Um, it doesn't die to Plasma Storm. doesn't die to Egg Morph if I'm way over here. And by the way, there are Magnetizes in the deck. So I'm basically just going to play this and then wait till I draw a Magnetized Divine Bond. And that's going to be lethal. Um, he can Thumping Wave it, but he's already used one and... I got plenty of Thumping Wave targets in this deck, so. Um, I really do not want him to get this mana tile now. As uh, as opposed to last turn, he would have just gotten 5 mana. Who cares about 5 mana? I really don't want him to get a 6 mana ahead of time because that's a um, Mechanter War Beast. So I need to take this and I need to also do something with these guys that's productive, not just slamming it in to my opponent. So my plan here, I think, was just play, uh, yeah, roar. So I, I have to roar here so that I can kill this 2-3 after it leaves the zeal. Kill it with this guy. Um, and I played the spell jammer on the mana tile just to, to deny him the mana. So this is a kind of a, a good heads-up play of recalling that he wouldn't be able to kill the 2-3 without the zeal. Oh, shit. I think that's the same reaction I had when it happened. Uh, so Iridium Scale is a little annoying. Um, killing both of our guys for the price of of nothing, basically. He took two less damage. He took four less damage, really, because he, he, he only had to attack the two power one and kill the four power one as well. So we've got two Alby Sages, which make me feel so confident in my ability to win this game because now he needs two thumping waves. I really do not know how he wins this game uh, if he is on the defensive because I am a combo deck that's just going to sit here and wait till I have the perfect hand and then I'm just going to kill him. Um, so yeah, I think I move forward here with this guy and then I think I run back and play Al like play Alby Sage here and then like run up and play Azurite Lion here. Um, and the reason I do this is because it spreads my threats out all across the board in a way that um, makes it impossible to, like, McCantor or something like that. There's the Magnetize. All right, we basically just have to wait for Divine Bond at this point in time. And 27 cards, and there's three of them. So I've got a one in nine chance of uh, grabbing one at any particular point in time. No, the ephemeral shrouds it. Boo earns. It's kind of convenient um, that he had to use the tiger exactly there to be able to shroud. Uh, otherwise, he could have picked off my two three. All right, we've got a lot of stuff we can do this turn. It's all awesome. Uh, I have to keep in mind that my opponent can still basically drogue on me out of the game. Uh, so, without thinking too much, if he Drogon overloads, Cryptographer overloads, that costs 8 mana, but he could do it with Flash. And how much would that be? That would be 4 to 8, then 9 to 18. So I'm lethal um, if I don't get out of the way. I don't know if I paid attention to that or not. Anyway... I think here what we want to do is uh, run away because of that. Um, probably just come up here and attack him with the spell jammer because there's no way that I'm going to be able to kill this. I can just k 
kill this ephemeral shroud with my Albi Sage at this point in time. Um, and then what do I do with my mana? I've got seven mana. I'd really like to get this Albi Sage out. Uh, but then I've got a whole bunch of other stuff I can do. Let's, let's just see what I did and then <laughs> Monday morning quarterback it. All right, got rid of the Scintilla. I don't know if I would have done that now. It seems like a pretty good card to have. All right, I play another Albi Sage. Good for me. I roar my Azurite line, and then, yeah, I probably Orin Nexus it, because this allows me to actually attack uh, his, the general here. All right, yep, I run away so as not to die to, like, Drogon or something like that. And I feel I'm pretty good right now. Even though I ran away, I, I can magnetize anything and, and get it right in his face. So, like, I could run forward, magnetize Holy Immolation this and basically kill him. And get him to one, but not actually kill him. Um, and this Grove line is actually kind of a thorn on my side because it means that this magnetize combo, I'm going to need a little bit more. I'm going to need Magnetize plus Holy Immolation plus Divine Bond now. So, replace, don't find Divine Bond, which would have been lethal. I've got this. What do I do? I probably just keep, uh, I'll just play these guys and uh, see what I get. Mm -hmm. I don't mind just loading up this side of the board with shit because, uh, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get to draw a card. Brilliant. <laughs> you run over there, yeah. Okay, yeah. Probably don't need to play the spell jammer as well. If I have a full hand, this gets out a couple things. There we go. If I remember it correctly, there's a reason I shouldn't have put it here, but I don't quite remember why now. All right. So this was a fine play. It sort of. Oh, I should have put. Uh, I should have put something here. So that if my opponent moves down with their general like that, I can move this piece forward and hit it or holy immolation and hit it. Yeah. So if I had put like this silver guard knight here or this uh, wind bladed up here or something like that, it would prevent him from coming down, basically sniping this Albi sage or this uh, blaze hound. In retrospect, that was uh, I, like after seeing my opponent move like that, that I was like, oh, Oopsie doodle. <laughs> Drogon. Rawr. Yeah, Meridium scale is awkward. Okie dokie. So he kills all our guys for free, which is super obnoxious. Uh, we have a minor punt here where we could have um, killed our opponent had we positioned correctly. Instead, we just turn our 4 3 into a 3 10. I move it, I guess, ever closer to our opponent. <laughs> this is some a weird series of movements, I think. Because uh, I moved back here. I, I was so scared of tele, um, Silhouette Tracer, I think. Uh, I think that was what I was playing around at this point in time. Because it, it still felt like I was just poised to win. Um, almost irrespective of what happened. That I just wanted to play around whatever I could think of where my opponent would kill me. Foolishly, in doing so, uh, I actually made it so Magnetized was no longer able to reach my opponent. So that was a mistake in that regard. Plasma Storm, super annoying. I should have, I guess, uh, I don't know. Okay. I realize my mistake here, by the way, when I go, I think I hit the Divine Bond here. And then I go, oh, wait, I can't, uh, let's see. Yeah, I draw the Divine Bond. But I'm like, oh, I can't kill my opponent. How foolish of me. 
Uh, so instead, I just drop this dum dum here. And I think holy immolate it to kill the drogon more or less. Uh, it is the card that is scary to me more than anything else going on. So if I kill this, it takes away a lot of his like scary <laughs> scariness. All right. We've got two Iron Cliff Guardians that are just ready to smack him upside the face. Rawr. Turns into a tree. All right. There is Saber Spine Tiger sort of blocking off uh, Iron Cliff Guardian. And as foretold many moons ago, uh, we were able to magnetize Divine Bond for just an absurd amount of damage. It, all, all it took was me waiting um, and being patient with it. Uh, and knowing that my opponent really wouldn't have a, m very many ways to deal with this threat. So Divine Bond, that's <laughs> one quadrillion damage. We even had a way to break the force field if we had another one of those. All right, that's it. Um, we ended up beating SS Doctor Who 3 to 1, and we resulted in a third place finish in the tournament. So I've got my deck lists linked up on Nine Moons. I'll link that article in the description below. Hope you guys appreciate or appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the. Uh, the commentary and feel free to let me know how stupid I was and my deck choices or strategy in general. Uh, made a lot of mistakes over these couple matches and I can't help but feel like uh, I don't like making mistakes. Anyway, thanks a lot for your time.